Well, that's it. The end is nigh. The golden age of being an expat in Portugal is over. That's it. The first horseman of the expat apocalypse is come upon us, and that is CNN. But hey, if everybody's going to start rushing in, I may as well dress like one of them. Try to fit in. Roll the intro. Hello there, I'm Rafael Di Furia, back at it again for another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Again, still thinking about switching things over to Sunday, so if you have any input on that, let me know in the comment section below. Whether you prefer Friday night or Sunday, things could be changing, things might be staying the same, who knows. But, oh goodness, <laughs> I really do feel as though that whenever CNN writes an article about living in a different country or what life is like there, it always kind of seems to be either the end of the golden era of what it is really wonderful to be an expat or to live abroad in a certain country and starts reigning in way too many people. But to be completely fair, it's not like Portugal hasn't already been overrun in some places, Lisbon, Porto, Algarve, like I've spoken about recently. So it's not necessarily that they're the ones to blame. However, by the time that CNN really gets around to these things, and it's not their first article, but just to be fair here. But normally I don't go over articles, but this week I did want to. There was one article that was published on the 13th of October, 2022. And I have to say it really reads like a sales pitch. So I'm going to read it that way. So Lisbon is in the midst of a renaissance. The latest European capital of cools, affordable rents, great nightlife, and gorgeous streets, which wind into the hills from the River Tagus have seen younger travelers arrive in droves in recent years, enjoying extended stays thanks to dedicated digital nomad visas. As a result, the city has taken on a youthful, multicultural, and international vibe. It had that before, CNN. It's nothing new. These people didn't bring it there. Don't be so full of yourselves. Helping to pull in tourists from all around the globe in the process. Come on. And I'm not talking about politics, I'm not talking about the news, but just specifically about CNN travel. It sometimes really feels so out of touch with reality. Like, okay, yeah, like you're seeing the tail end of something, but not understanding the real reasons why. And I guess this is part of the problem when you have people who writing who don't maybe fully understand what's going on. And, and I'll try to remember to link this in the uh, pinned comment in, under this video on YouTube. This was written by uh, two people, Richard Quest and Joe Minan. Minan? I'm sorry. I'm not even going to try to say it. But getting back to the article, walking in the streets of Portugal's buzzing capital, and it's impossible to escape a sense of confidence around the place. Locals have truly begun embracing their Portuguese identity. What do you mean they've truly begun? This is so absurd. <laughs> like, oh, because people are coming to the country, they're now embracing. No, the Portuguese people have always been unashamedly Portuguese. That's it. <laughs> embracing. They've truly begun embracing their portrait. Come on, CNN. Unashamedly showcasing the best of traditional food and culture, from delicious pastel de nata pastry in the Belém district to the ashing sounds of the Fado singing in Alfama. Okay, I'm just going to share my personal opinion here. And if you saw my travels to Lisbon, you'll know already what I think. But hot take here. I think pastel de Belém is completely overrated. It's good. Really good. One of the best but overrated. Anyway, it all goes to make up what Lisbon citizens call Alma, or soul, something that's utterly unique to this wonderful place. Oh, that is such a load of crap. I am sorry, and like, I know I'm really going off in this one. The soul of Portugal is not unique to Lisbon. There is so much more to Portugal than just one city. It's like going to say New York City is the ultimate representation of the epitome of what it means to be in America. Okay, fine. Like, it's a cool city, but it doesn't represent the whole country. Although, I will say, actually, in comparison that Lisbon is much more representative and much more true to what you find in other parts of the country or just to the Portuguese 
feel than you would say maybe, in, at least in my opinion, about New York. New York has its own feeling, its own way of being that you don't find in other places. But to get back into this wonderful article, visitors can see this on special nights such as June 13th's The Feast of St. Anthony, perhaps the biggest night in the Lisbon calendar when locals celebrate their patron saint with long processions that go late into the night, preceded by epic meals of sardines and local wine in the streets. Okay, yeah, okay, here's the, this is like maybe the first paragraph in this whole article so far that I'll say, okay, like, there's a point. But Alma goes beyond just one night. Is it me here or are they trying to insinuate that being in Lisbon is like a one night stand or that Lisbon soul is a one night stand? Okay, and yes, they're talking about this Feast of St. Anthony, but somehow it feels like an insinuation of a one night stand here. All right, back to the article. Come here at any time of the year and there's a feeling that life is to be lived in public. That might be on the bohemian streets of the Barrio Alto neighborhood. Like they're really selling it, man. Like, I, okay, there is something to body all to, but like, <laughs> such a touristy place, and even it can be a little sketchy. But they're really like, oh, oh, this is the place, man. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely the place if you want to go listen to Fado in Lisbon. My opinion, I'm sure there could be other places that could be better, but Fado, that's a whole separate topic for a whole other video. Love to do something on that one day. Where restaurants spill out into narrow lanes. And that's one little thing that kind of gives you a little bit of a sense is that some of these places are so overly touristic that you do just have restaurants. Okay, fine, maybe in the past things weren't as touristy, but it just pouring out into the streets like that, it's a whole different thing. And I feel like it becomes an issue once too many tourists come into a place and especially leading to safety and security in an area. So again, whole different issue for a whole different video. Back to the article. Or at ultra hip spots like Park, a bar atop a multi-story parking lot that has become a byword for hipster cool, not to mention incredible views. Everyone is welcome and the atmosphere remains vibrant well into the early hours. <laughs> okay, hipster cool, I don't know about that. I've never been to this place. It could be something. I'm not going to comment on that. But this is the thing. It's not unique to Lisbon. It's not unique to one bar. But everyone is welcome. And the atmosphere remains vibrant well into the early hours. That is Portugal. I'm going to skip a section just that gets into Fado and an interview with a specific Fado singer that's there. And it's actually, I would say, cool. Like, that's going to be part of the article that I don't really have such a, such a like, feeling about. But let's get into this next section called An Age. Age of Discovery. Lisbon can feel as if it's half on land and half at sea, with the wide sweep of the River Tagus leading out into the vast Atlantic. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's actually, there's truth to that, but half on land, half on sea. Not quite, because <laughs> it's a river. <laughs> you have to get a little bit further out of Lisbon to get properly to the Atlantic. But whatever, man. This, after all, is a country that remains fiercely proud of its 500 years of seafaring history. Okay, here's another point that I actually agree with, and I do think that there really is something to that. And this, I would say, if you are moving to Portugal, it is worthwhile to be aware of Portuguese history and the pride that people have for it, even if you're only minimally aware of kind of some of what happened and the uh, discovery age and the, the exploration that the Portuguese did, this is a point of pride for a lot of people. But even if people aren't necessarily so actively aware or don't know all the details, it's something that even if they're not outwardly proud of, there's like, you can feel like a little sense of pride there. So I'm glad at least they got something right. Lisbon's famous Padrão dos Descobrimentos, Monument of Discoveries, which stands in the Belém neighborhood on the banks of the Tagus. Pay tribute to the country's great explorers. And that's actually, again, something that I'll give them that is a very important thing. But this is also an unfortunate thing about a lot of travel videos, documentaries, articles, is that they focus on the same like three things, sardines, the, the monument of the discoverers, and pastel de nata. Granted, okay, fine, I did a whole video on my trip to go get pastel de nata. That's a thing, it's a Lisbon thing, but still, there's so little focus on 
anything beyond a certain point which makes up the real Portugal and the wonderful and the things that are really wonderful that can truly make the experience here great. Because, okay, granted this is a CNN travel article, but they're talking about the the European capital of cool that keeps getting cooler. But even though this is a CNN travel article, they did mention about the visa to come be here. So I'm sure there will be people who get inspired by this. It's not. It wouldn't be the first time that people would get inspired by a CNN article. I've met and had interactions with plenty of people who've been inspired by them. I've had people contact me after reading a CNN article, finding one of my old episodes about Italy, and then contacting me or coming to watch videos. So like, I know that these things happen, but I don't know. I always, when CNN gets their hands on these types of things, I always start getting concerned, like legitimately concerned about the effects that it has on a place because I've seen it have negative effects in some areas of the world, but that's a little bit going off on a different tangent. <laughs> then it gets into an interview with a chef, Chef Jose Alvarez, um, and it, it, whatever. I'm skipping around here a little bit, but to get back into the article then, they say, speak with the locals here, and it won't be long before they remind you of the great explorers and age of discovery some 500 years ago. However, there wasn't always much to be said about its more modern past. Much of that has changed in the last 20 years, though, as a sense of confidence has come to be felt across the city with Lisbon's resurgence as a tourist destination and a place to work and play. <laughs> if I were someone from Lisbon, like I would almost maybe be offended by that. A sense of confidence that has come to be felt because of tourism, like because of people coming to the country. No, come on. Like There have been things that people in Portugal maybe faced in modern history that weren't so great. And that would be maybe something that would not be like this great time to look back on. But to insinuate that because of the last 20 years, because of people finding this new wonderful location, which it is wonderful, but because of that, that they're now gaining confidence. No, that's so absurd to insinuate there, but whatever. Anyway, this is getting to the end of the article here, but I just, I can't when it comes to CNN travel. There's just this, I don't know how to even say it, but I feel as though sometimes especially, maybe it's just because it's my language, maybe because I understand some of the nuance there, but it feels as though sometimes, especially from the English-speaking world, that there's this sense of like, oh, we are the greatest because we have found this place that existed for X amount of years, and now we are turning it into the the ba 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 through our tourism and our patronage, and a ba 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 and it's like, come on, man, like, really? It was a thing before you got there. Okay, may have not had the same level of popularity, at least in your part of the world. But there have been people who've known about some of these wonderful things forever and haven't hurt certain segments of the population through boosting prices absurdly, or I hate to even use this word, but gentrification. There can be a positive side to gentrification, but there can also be a negative side to it. It feels as though there's a whole segment of individuals that end up reading articles like this, get inspired. Oh, wow, I can go live in another country. Ah, gee willikers, it's going to be amazing and wonderful, and we're going to just get a place, and it's going to be the same as in our country. But, oh, wait, we got here, and now, oh, goodness, and things are different. And Wow, they were so wonderful at home. Maybe we need to make things better and get things to be the way that they were because we know how to do it and our way of doing things is the best way. There's a there's a, a phrase for that in Italian. A wonderful little phrase that I learned in Italian years ago and I feel as though it really represents the response that I have to that sentiment. Something of a dialectic nature which even my ancestors may have used at some point. Afanculo. When you go to another country, it's important to be able to appreciate it for what it is. Fine, things may not be perfect, but the improvement of the quality of life or the way to move forward has to be done on local terms with respect to the local population. Fine, maybe there will be some of those people who are from that area who do see how things work in another part of the world and say, okay, that's something that we would like to adopt, but it has to be done on their terms. It can't be something that you coming from another part of the world come in to change. If you have left your country because of how unhappy you are with how things are there, with the situation, whether it's political, financial, social, whatever it is, then why are you going to go to another country, live in a bubble 
with people that are from your same place and then recreate the same situation that you had there. If you are moving abroad, why are you going to try to set up the same life that you had in your previous country? I can understand that there is definitely something to be said for having a level of comfort. For example, even comfort food. There's something to be said for that. However, to recreate the whole same situation and just take advantage of an area, drive prices up, and even like we see in Lisbon, turning it into a very touristy place... It's unfortunate, in my opinion. I do think it's a wonderful city once you get out of the touristy areas. But even then, it's unfortunate that in the most central areas that should have the most Portuguese flavor end up now having maybe some of the least or the tourist version of what it is. And I'm not saying I've got the answers to the problem here, but I do think that part of the problem comes from a level of responsibility from the people who are coming to that place. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section below if you agree with me, disagree with me, or think that I am getting in a fluster about nothing. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming to join me for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. And of course, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who help to make these episodes possible on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, through patreon.com slash rafael di fuori, rafael di fuori.com slash patreon, as well as the thanks button here on YouTube. All of those really help to be able to allow this project to be able to continue. So thank you all so very much, as well as the purchases of the shirts, mugs, onesies, and more. Of course, as always, I'm Rafael Di Furia. This has been another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. Thank you so much for joining in for another episode. Stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see you all next time. Later. Mm -hmm.